at what speeds can you take on this sea of sand? This combat vehicle can move on this kind of surface at a speed of about 50 to 55 miles per hour. 55? By 2007, this model of SUV was a 12-time champion of the famous Dakar Rally. This particular car is a 93. It's a rally veteran that's still on the move to this day. The engine, a powerful 3-liter V6, is the only original part of the vehicle left at this point. Many of the parts have been removed, the car weighs around 4,000 pounds, and much has been replaced. And of course, the most important thing in a rally SUV is the suspension system. This ride, old as it may be, and though it has its limitations, it's still equipped with eight sport shock absorbers. Will this veteran be able to show me what rally cars are generally capable of? Yeah? So you're gonna save me? Definitely. <laughs> of course. The second you sit down in the car, you feel fully protected on all sides. Listen, well, you straight up feel like you're in a cocoon in here, right? It's a frame. That is the this metal cage that you and I are currently surrounded by. Uh -huh. It saves the lives of those inside it. The frame is made from all metal welded tubes, and there's anatomical sport seats, and of course, six point seat belts. Exhale and tighten the straps. <sighs> Ugh. How do you feel? Like I'm chained to this sports chair now. That's how it should be. I think I'll take off my sunglasses just so that the audience can see the emotions in my eyes. I'm thinking that there's gonna be a sea of them. A sea? Yes, a sea of sand and a sea of emotions. Oh, listen, what a beautiful sound. A power? That's what makes motorsports. <laughs> a V6 sounds very nice. Let's go? Let's go. I wanna see exactly what this V6 is capable of. Wow. And then it immediately became clear that the dunes are just like waves. Wow. Hold on. Goodness. It feels like I've been caught in a category four storm and the sea of sand itself behaves just as erratically as open water can. When you fly over the dunes, do you know what is after them? Do you already know this path like the back of your hand? Never. You never know? Wow, wow, oh, what if there's a cliff, huh? But no, just the opposite. Oh my God, oh my God. Right now, you and I are located at the top of the Big Brother Dune. Its height is 65 feet and the angle is 60 degrees. And we now have to descend this mountain of sand. So? You sure you're ready? Yes. We're off. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, goodness. <laughs> now we're gonna sink in a little, oh, uh, but uh, it's no big deal. Uh. And during the descent, the only way to slow down is with the engine. The middle pedal is no good out here in the desert. That can lead to tragic consequences in the form of a car flipping. You can't hit the brakes. And on the dunes in the middle of the steppe, such rolls during the rally are not uncommon. It's especially upsetting to overturn right at the beginning. So how can you take on the sand? Your best bet is to keep everything spinning. You seem to be swerving the car all the time. I'm trying to find the most optimal pathway, one that will allow us to go fast and not get stuck in the sand. That is, here it's just a sand without, without any greenery. It's very loose, which means it's very easy to get stuck in it. Sand with vegetation indicates that there is water underneath. If there's water, that means the sand will be more dense. It turns out that rally drivers are like frogs hopping from place to place, and this is where the suspension comes in. It must be rigid, but powerful, and capable of allowing plenty of movement in order to take on the entire load of the car like this. Here, the suspension is elaborate, but our car still has some shortcomings. It has a short frame. From the outside, these leaps are beautiful even, but inside, it's like this. And something cracked badly in my mouth. Later, I was told that's a pretty typical injury. Is your tongue okay? My tongue, yes, but my teeth, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But Alexei wasn't going to start feeling bad for me. Oh. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh. Wow. 
Wow, what are you doing? Uh, what the heck? Relax a little bit. <laughs> you drive like this. You drive like this not for five minutes. You drive like this for hundreds of miles and for days, right? And rally raids. In the rally raid, the average stage is about 186 miles. This is the main difference between rally raids and cross country to where the track is short, circular, and prepared, or from ordinary rallies in which the participants are given the opportunity to familiarize themselves with the longer tests. Raids such as, for example, the annual Astrahan, the Gold of Kagan race, includes distances of hundreds of miles a day, and they last 3 to 30 days going over rough terrain and unfamiliar routes. Only half of those who start the rally reach the finish line. That's why a rally raid is always a team effort. All that the crew has is a legend, this is what they call their maps, it's issued to them the morning before each stage. On it, every bump, every jump has been marked. The navigator's task is to convey this information to the driver in a timely manner. This workhorse belongs to the organizer of the Gold of Kagan raid. In it, Oleg Trifonov, together with his colleagues, travels around this step every year to develop a new competitive track. And it was Oleg himself who agreed to teach me the basics of navigational skills. Oh, he doesn't know what he's gotten himself into. Well, hello, Oleg. Hello, Sasha. Here is one of the navigator's tools that the crew uses in the race. From point A, from start to finish. And here they have everything written out. But it's well known that the language of auto abbreviations is French. Take this for example. It doesn't mean don't write letters, but take the main road behind the building and be prepared for the fact that it's curvy and dangerous. And that's what this road book is filled with. Let's begin. Tell me what's first. Okay, in half a mile, turn left. Well, seems easy enough so far. So, in 1,000 feet, turn left. After 300 feet, turn left. Stop, stop, Sasha. Look, look. What? I'll explain. This number shows... Oh, this, it's 30 feet. It's 30 feet. It's yeah. 30 feet, yes. <laughs> Yep, not a great start. In addition, after each obstacle, the distance counter must be reset to zero. Otherwise, after 1,500 feet, turn to the le to the right. It's here. No, it's still early. I... It's here. Why is it already saying that? Did I reset it incorrectly? Probably. I started messing things up right away. 1,000 feet to the next point. Oh, ugh. Unbelievable. <laughs> the sun blinds me, the map is unreadable. Everything is already blurring before my eyes. I don't understand. 650 feet to the next point. Left turn. Zero it out. Set to zero. And here there will be bumps ahead. Heading of 270 yep, degrees. Here they are. Whoa. I lag. <laughs> And all of this is done at speeds three to four times faster than what we're at now. This is what makes up the navigator's job. He follows the road and the road book and the instruments and the course. He has a lot to- Okay, I lost my place. We've got 1,500 feet already. He has a lot on his plate. <laughs> yeah. And in addition to all that, the navigator doesn't stop talking the whole racing day. 1,500 right over the hill. It's hard for everyone. Come on, eager. Now you can listen to how you actually ought to read the legend. 1,000 crossover. Here's a ditch, two, two bumps. The nature of the track, 100, the ditch, two. Here's a bump. Whoa. Why aren't you saying anything? Where? It's not in here. Sasha, I think we're lost. Seriously? You know, Sasha, we have a saying. If you win the race, the driver won it. And if you lose, then the navigator is to blame. Well, I can mess up anywhere, and yet, thanks to my job, they still let me drive. Oh. The car is started. Keeping pressing on the gas pedal until that light there goes out. Great. Immediately up to fourth. All right, it straight up takes off. Whoosh. 
The brake pedal, in contrast to the gas next to it, is very stiff. Yeah, my knee is, <laughs> is shaking now. This is a combat vehicle. There's no brake booster, so everything's real now. Everything's serious. And further on, believe me, everything will only get more so. We're going. Let up, let up, let up, let up on the gas, that's it. Where do, where should I go? Perfect, we'll go over there. Left, 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 left. That's it, that's it, that's it. Now I understand why you were turning the wheel all the time. It's complete chaos. You have to tack between the sand peaks. Tacking? You mean steering like on a ship? Exactly right, we're on a desert ship. But to be honest, my frantic rotation of the steering wheel didn't keep me from taking off. Wow. All good. But I can't see anything and falling down. Oh. Oh. But I did quickly realize that the gas pedal is the most important one in all the sand. So in front of the ramps, you can add a little gas. It'll be gentler. Gas, oh, too late. Yeah, not so gentle. Late, late because the car has to jump off of it. Oh, brave. I, I instinctively do the opposite. I want to slow down. Gas, gas, late, late. Oh, give it gas now. You see, just to jump here, in a smooth, beautiful landing. Gas? Be more careful here. No, you can't see where you're going, be careful. I can't see where I'm going at all. I don't know how I'm doing this at all right now. Well, actually, you're doing pretty well. Now there's gonna be a ramp. Careful. Oh, goodness. Gas, 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 sand, 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 gas. And here's where I start working with the wheel, right? Exactly, exactly right. When you look at it, being behind the wheel during a rally is simply non-stop work. And I mean that quite literally, non-stop. So what's here? Yeah, here we're stuck. <laughs> at the very peak of my whole rally career and we get stuck? This is the whole point. You can't leave the car without inertia in a position like the one we've stopped in now. That is, with our nose raised like this, we won't be going forward. We would just bury ourselves in the sand. Any car with any type of wheels can sit down, as they call it here. That's why all rally drivers have shovels in their cars. The athletes jokingly call the local dunes the sandbox. There's nothing to worry about and everything's fine. You just need to keep on going. I was lucky. This time, simply shifting into reverse saved me and I was back in the saddle. Oh, did I do it right just then? Yes. But in general, the Astrakhan step is doubly difficult. After all, there's not only sand there, the surface is inconsistent. There's swampy mud and gravel. This path is called the 3D road because the local hills are treacherous. Even professional drivers train here before going on to win the Dakar. The conditions are tougher here than at Dakar. And you just speed through it all. Does your heart ever jump in your throat still? It does. It, it does when you take off and the road is off to the side and you're just flying. And what do you do in those moments? What can I do? Nothing? Just relax into it? Keep my tongue away from my teeth. <laughs> I drove 43 miles along a segment of a real rally track, and to be honest, it was unforgettable. You look around intently for an hour. No, not off into the horizon, but under the wheels. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Easy, easy, easy. That's it, that's it. Good, good, well done. But at the same time, you understand why so many people are ready to drive along this lack of a road for days on end, because this is some kind of three-dimensional freedom. The annual Astrakhan Camel Race. These ships of the desert are accustomed to being perceived as slow and sluggish, but don't underestimate them. No, camels don't really like to run, but their bodies have remarkably adapted to both speed and overcoming seas of sand. It's time to take a look at these ships um, from an unexpected angle. Guys, hi, I'm Sasha. Hello, I'm Azamat. Nice to meet you. Acklebeck. Acklebeck. And what are the animals' names? Snow White. Snow White? Saratan. And Saratan. Why Snow White? Because she's white? Yeah. Yes? I heard that females are more valued for running, is that right? Yeah. But why? 
Better stamina. Better stamina? The females are tougher? Yeah. And faster? Yes, and they are better suited for training. These are Bactrian camels, the so-called two-humped camels. Snow White is a 2013 model. By camel standards, she's still a new model. Camels continue to grow until they're seven years old. Their height is a little more than eight feet, and they weigh around 700 pounds. About half that is in their humps. That means their center of gravity, although up high, is still located in the middle. And even with its serious fuel consumption, they're capable of drinking up to 137 quarts of water in 10 minutes. They're still an ideal SUV. They They've got great traction and four-wheel drive. Both axles are unlocked. No, their average speed isn't high, three miles per hour, but their maximum speed is a whopping 37. But there is one big but when it comes to this mode of transportation. To be honest, I'm pretty scared simply because I am one of those lucky people who fell off a camel at the age of five at the Moscow Zoo. Okay, 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 she won't spit at me, will she? For some reason, I think she really doesn't give a damn about our shoot. Look, to understand how to manage a camel, you should saddle up, right? Which one? Can I take a ride? Yep. I am, of course, quite predictably offered the predictable Snow White, and I'm told you need to approach her from a certain side, no exceptions. She's just used to it? Because everyone climbs up on the no? left, yes, and the camel gets used to it. Don't don't put your oh, foot down, just, just swing. swing your leg over. Oh my goodness. She's so warm. <laughs> All that remains is to grip onto the pillow harder and... Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> You're totally used to this, right? Yes, my grandfathers, my great-grandfathers, they all went through this. So it's in your blood? Yes. And what do I do to make her go? Kick your feet, and to slow down, pull towards yourself. All right, but this is not the time to slow down. Oh, we're moving. I'm about to become the captain of a real live ship of the desert. <laughs> this is living power, but I don't feel like I'm controlling it. It's more like it's controlling me, and it's a very unpleasant feeling. Once upon a time, I was involved in equestrian sports, but a camel is not a horse. Okay, not so fast. Not so fast. My knees are shaking, you know? Let's turn. Oh, oh. Listen, the turning radius is actually pretty small. Let's go. Although the steering wheel, a stick in their nose, called a budagash, copes with the task well, but she doesn't want to move. It won't start. Here it is, living power. She wants to, she walks. She doesn't want to, she doesn't. This is why camel racing is a bit comical. The animals can refuse to start at all. They can run off wherever they want to or stop in the middle of the track. But on the other hand, if they run, they do it in a very unusual way. Check out the classic stride of a horse. They move first their right back and left front legs simultaneously and then vice versa. Camels amble. They move their legs on one side, then the other. They throw out first the right ones, then their left, and for a moment completely come off the ground. For moving straight forward, this is the most powerful and fastest way to move. Perfect for the desert. It's a great off-road vehicle. A car can break down, but a camel will never break down. <laughs> In the end, after having relaxed a little, I even enjoyed the ride, but I'm not sure that Snow White feels the same. Okay, down. Oh, come on. Ooh. <laughs> come on already, let's park. Yay. This is my first parked camel. Thank you, Snow White, for putting up with me. But there's something very sacred in this connection between man and beast. Ackelbeck. Well, come here, take your car back. Thank you. They appeared in the middle of the 20th century in America. They became really popular in the early 80s after the release of the second part of the film Mad Max Road Warrior. And these are real off-road soldiers. Buggies are made for sand, and therefore they feel like fish in water, not ships. Woohoo! But small and agile boats. Vladimir? Well, this is better than any camel, I'd say. I absolutely agree with you. A camel must be fed and looked after. But with this, I fill it up, twist something here and there, and drive off. That's it. And then, of course, you built this machine yourself. 
That's absolutely right. I built it in a year, without stressing easily and naturally. Just a year? Yeah. And there you go. And there you go. This buggy was assembled from the pieces of Russian front-wheel drive classics, moving elements, and an engine from the Vaz 8 with 72 horsepower. There's parts from one classic car and another, the cooling radiator from a third, but it's difficult to recognize cars in this construction. There's no body that's been completely replaced by a seamless pipe. That is why the total weight is only about 1,300 pounds, and the engine, as befits a sports car, was moved from the front to the back. And as you can see, the rear is slightly wider. They say for better cornering, and it's time to try that out. I don't mind. I've never seen a buggy in person, let alone driven one. Because of that, and at least in part because it's a stick shift. Okay, shifter, yeah? Well then... Let's go. I'm a little worried, but... Hey, we're off. I shouldn't be. Well, the clutch, second. Reaching the pedals in this little machine is not so easy. So, second? Yes, the clutch. Shifting into the gears isn't easy either. Yes, there, finally. But, listen, this is unbelievable. In just the first 15 seconds you're sitting here, you just fly over the ground. So, third gear, third. Yes. Awesome. This is just a huge rush of adrenaline, instantaneous, like an injection of nitrous oxide right into the bloodstream. And this is with 72 horses. And this cannot yes. be compared to driving any old car. This is such a pure high. Try and swerve a bit. It's very nimble. Honestly, I'm not much of a drifter. Just amazing, amazing. It's all rear wheel drive, right? Yeah. But here on a salt flat and in a buggy, it would be a sin not to try. We need to switch to first gear. Okay. First gear. Okay. Oh. Wheel to the side and gas, gas. In the low gear, the engine produces the maximum amount of revolutions, but at the same time, the torque transmitted by the transmission to the drive wheels is minimal. The speed drops and the wheels lose their grip on the ground due to the overdrive. Accordingly, the wheels slip into a skid faster. And then the more the skid, the better the buzz. All right. Wow, cool. This car, of course, is not intended for interviews at all because now I have about a ton of sand in my mouth. That's not too bad. There aren't any bugs. Ah, you mean it all adds up, right? Yes. You can have lunch at the same time. <laughs> and dinner. And so if you put off breakfast, well, and you've got some technical skills, you can afford to make the same incredible ride for yourself. Well, we spent about $2,000. $2,000. Yeah, well, plus or minus 100 bucks. Well, I'm thinking that now, after watching this video, many people will start assembling cars like this on the weekends. This is a wild thrill. I'm all for it. It's like in childhood, you know? Everyone loves bumper cars. This is a real toy like that. Yep, yep, yep. A toy car, but one made for adults. But it's time, perhaps, to hand over the reins to the chief designer and driver. Vladimir, <laughs> it really is. This is that sort of case when at times it's scarier to be a passenger. Uh, oh, woo. People, buggies are the best cards in the world and inexpensive. Wow. At sunset on the Astrakhan Salt Flat is where even on a homemade and not very powerful machine, you can feel all the charm of a buggy. Woo. After all, this vehicle allows you to literally merge with nature. Due to the fact that you don't have a cab and due to the fact that you don't have any windows, you feel like you're really flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way low, straight up flying over the ground. All in all, we drove, well, 35, 45 maximum and still you get... It's a completely different feeling of speed. That's why you feel the thrill, let's say, uh, let's say the, the buzz from this. Activity. Come
conquering the sand is an incredible hobby and hard work. All of these machines, and not just machines, are designed to conquer the desert. But no matter what the ship is, it will not sail without a captain. I am truly amazed by the rally drivers because this sport is a pure struggle. But perhaps I also have to agree, this is also the most interesting way to drive.